الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين continuing with the rights of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام upon ourselves from the book of الرسالة التبوكية by ابن القيم رحمه الله and as we said this is a fard this is an obligation this is part of saying أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one to be worshipped and the Prophet والسلام, the only one to be followed in the absolute <laughs> sense without any conditions and that awla bin min as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the Prophet والسلام, has more rights to the believers than their own selves and the meaning of awla bil mu'minin I just want to make this clear it doesn't mean that you have rights to yourself upon yourself and the Prophet والسلام, has rights on you so his rights والسلام, is more over you it's not like this if you mention the Prophet والسلام, and yourself you have no rights his rights takes over his rights over you takes over right so that means you don't you're not left with anything for yourself if there is something that is said about other than the Prophet والسلام, this is not a good thing, right? But for the Prophet والسلام, as we heard yesterday, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a mercy to mankind. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ That he is so eager for your goodness and success in this life and year after, and he is عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ That it's very difficult for him that he, that he would see you in, in some uh, form of difficulty. So uh, since the Prophet والسلام, everything is revelation from Allah. And we are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore the message of the Prophet والسلام, what he said about ourselves, that takes over. And it's explained very clearly as we heard that if you want to sleep, because you have the right to sleep. But the Prophet ﷺ gives you an order, don't sleep now, make salah. You're tired, but there's salah to dhuhr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you. And who's the one that ballagh al risala Who's the one that conveyed this message? The Messenger ﷺ. So can you say, but I have rights to sleep? There's no such a thing. His rights over you takes over. In your wealth, in your health, in every matter. Right? Uh, the, this money that you earned and you were, you were sweated for it. But it's haram. Who's the one that would decide that it's haram? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's the one that conveyed this to us? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's from the wahi from Allah because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not speak from his own self, from his own desire. Rather from the wahi from Allah. So at the end, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. So uh, continuing with this, he said that that ayah and nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim then the Prophet والسلام, have more rights over the believers than their own selves. Uh, it's including more than one point that we need to pay attention to. First, or one of them, an yakuna ahabba ila al-abdi min nafsi that the Prophet والسلام, is more beloved to oneself than your own self. So the Prophet والسلام, when it comes to who is the one that you love first, they keep on telling you you have to love yourself first and all that. No. Yourself is second. The love of the Prophet والسلام, comes first. So this is a love that is chosen. لا يؤمن وحدكم حتى أكون أحب لي من نفسي ولدي ولدي ونسي أجمعين. None of you shall believe, complete their iman till uh, I'm more beloved to him than his own self, than his offsprings, than his parents, than the entire human beings. So the love of the Prophet ﷺ comes through. This is among all of the human beings. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something else. Is Nothing is the like of Allah. right? So that's why the love of the Prophet ﷺ, which is in that status, is because of the love of Allah. Because the, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, وَنَفْسُ الْعَبْدِ أَحَبُّ لَهُ مِنْ غَيْرِ And oneself, you love yourself more than anyone else. And as we said in the Day of Judgment, it becomes clear. 
uh, how a person would even uh, flee from everyone to save his own self. And since the, the Prophet والسلام, even the person didn't see the Prophet والسلام, didn't meet the Prophet والسلام, but since the Prophet والسلام, adding to what mentioned before he has more rights over yourself than your own self and he love yourself more than you love yourself because he was sent as a mercy to all mankind and he wants what is best for you so a human being can ruin himself a person can be an enemy to himself if he ruins himself does it make sense? So if someone goes into the, uh, the road of uh, destruction, destroying himself, he's an enemy to himself. So when someone come and pull him away, if someone wants to commit suicide, for example, what do they do with someone that is about to throw himself from a cliff or from a bridge or something? They would make all kinds of tricks first, but then they might come and push him a very strong push away from what he's throwing himself into, and he might even get wounded. Why? To save him from death. And people will call them heroes and they did a great job. But if you zoom into the action itself, well, he pushed them. They pushed this poor guy. Why would they do that? Leave him alone. So this is a very small example that we can relate to. Imagine then the entire life and whatever it contains. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned something in the meanings of which. That مثلي ومثلكم, the example of myself, meaning the Prophet والسلام, and the rest, everyone else, is like someone, he wants to throw himself into the fire. And I'm grabbing you from Al-Hujaz. Al-Hujaz is your uh, waist uh, belt or <coughs> from your waist. I'm pulling you from your waist. But you keep on refusing and pulling yourself to throw yourself into the fire and I'm pulling you away from the fire. I'm trying to pull you away from the fire and you keep on pushing yourself into the fire. And the Prophet والسلام, he speaks from Wahi. So this is exactly <coughs> what is the relationship between the Prophet والسلام, and his Ummah. So when someone disobeys the Prophet والسلام, he's disobeying because of his own desire, because he wants to make lots of money, because he feels this way, he desires this way. He is taking the road of throwing himself to the hell fire. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying to him, no, do not do that. So who loves this individual more? That individual love himself or the Prophet ﷺ love him more? So this is something that is part of Al-Iman. <coughs> part of Al-Iman, that the love of the Messenger ﷺ more than oneself. And this is how a person becomes a mu'min. Otherwise, the Prophet ﷺ negated Al-Iman from him. Till he loves the Prophet ﷺ more than his own self. And by necessity, if that's the case, what does that mean? Al-Lazim. Al-Lazim is by necessity, um, the full submission, the obedience, to be pleased, uh, the obedience, submission to the orders of the Prophet ﷺ, his sunnah ﷺ, and to be pleased with it, to be happy that you get to know the way the Prophet ﷺ, even if it's against the entire life that you lived upon something else. Now you, you see clearly with matters of knowledge that this is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. That's why they, uh, when they always say, النقل الصحيح, the authentic narrations that we get to know from the Prophet ﷺ, comes before anything and comes before al-aql. You know, the, the reason, one's reason. So once a person get to know something like this, even if it's physically requires for him to be patient and requires for him to sleep less maybe or to go against his sinful desires. But in his heart, he's pleased. He's pleased with the fact that he got to know the way the Prophet ﷺ, with the sleep, submission. And this is all by necessity what brings uh, as a result of the love in general and the love of the Messenger ﷺ and to choose that more than anything else. And uh, this, in the, uh, as far as uh, you know, any Muslim would agree to this, inshallah ta'ala. But then when, when these things are put into the test, a person has to be truthful and not to reject the words of the Prophet ﷺ. You know the fitan. Some people, they don't even accept the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ because it doesn't make sense to them, to their own weak and deficient mind. And this is one, this is the, the first fitna, the first corruption 
that ever happened to uh, humanity. And who's the, the leader in this? Iblis. Iblis, he's, he was the first one to initiate putting one's reason before the wahi from Allah. When he was commanded to make sujood to Adam alayhi salam, who's the one that is ordering him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why did Iblis refuse to make sujood to Adam? He, he used his own reason. He said, I'm better than him. You, create, you created me from fire and you created him from mud. So he used a reason. Jinnah and human beings, they have the ability to see something and to make conclusions. Reason. So that's the first sin that was committed. It's because of this evil thing. When a person would put forward his own reasons before the wahi from Allah. And then they would say, oh, when you say, keep on saying submission and the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah, the way of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, that means we don't have aqul, we don't have reason. Reason is such a respected thing in the deen of Islam. And the verses of the Quran, afala ta'qilun, ayat for those who have aql, for those who have reason. No doubt about this. And who's the one that created our minds and our reason? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you say your reason, based on what? Can a, a baby uh, do the same thing? No. Why? Because he's not developed yet. He doesn't understand what reason is. So now after uh, being uh, mukallaf or being responsible for action, we have some reason after five years seeing your, ho your house and your car and the environment that you're in, in this very tiny uh, place on the universe. Now you can make decisions for the whole universe based on what? Because the reason is you have to have something given and then based on what you have given of information, then you can draw conclusions, right? So what is given to you? Nothing. So a person would make decisions about al-ghayb and about the unseen based on their limited deficient reason. So the principle of the people of Ahl-Sunnah, which is based on this, that we put forward a naql, the evidences, the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ before anything else and before individual reasons and so on, this is what perfectly fits those who are intellect and follow reasons. This is what reason would lead the person to. Because what the wahi means, what the naqli means, what is this uh, text means, means it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the creator of the heavens and the earth. So the one that created your mind and your reason and created everything. So if it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then our reason is to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Then we implement it. And then you have this huge space to use your, mashallah, beautiful reasons in building your house and uh, make an airplane and a microphone and sew clothing and all of the materialistic things in this world. Ex excel in it, mashallah. This is your, your uh, domain of, of using if, it's, if you want to use your reason to the best way. But when it comes to command from Allah, people don't use their reason when they're working for a company and they're getting a lot of money and then the boss gives them a, an order they don't go to him that unless they want you know a bonus from him he realized that what he said is wrong i'm not going to do it doesn't make sense right in his micro position he would never dare to do this he would just do his job because he wants the money at the end of the month people do this as to other to other human beings so imagine when it comes to the wahi of allah so it's all ways of iblis this is the ways of Iblis and has roots to it and there's history to it, which is something that we can discuss later, inshallah ta'ala. And you would find that the different sects and the different deviations that happened from the pure sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the way the companions عنهم, was initiated from this. Whether it's the khawarij that happened at the time of the Sahaba عنهم, came from as a result of that the Mu'tazilis and the Mu'tazilis with uh, refuting the Jahmis and then the other small uh, sects came about. All of that is because putting their own deficient reason before the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first one, the love. The second one, Allah yakuna, and as we know the, the, the statement of Ali radiallahu anhu, we should memorize that statement, which shows how that when we talk about the wahi, we're talking about aqidah, matters of belief, belief, talking about matters of fiqh, and akhlaq and so on. So that means we have to have that submission. When he said, لو كان الدين بالعقل أو بالرأي If the deen was according to one's reason and one's opinions لكان مسح أسفل الخف أولى من أعلى If the deen was with one's reason then we would have been commanded to wipe 
the bottom of the khuf, the bottom of your leather socks or your socks, more than wiping the upper part of it. When you're making wudu and you're wearing your khuf or your, your socks, how do you wipe over it? On the bottom? If you wipe on the bottom, your wudu is not valid. But it makes sense, your sense, our sense, if, it, if it's about cleaning, this is what we touch the ground with. So you're walking with your, your socks or with your sock, you want to wipe the bottom of it. No, you wipe the top of it. Because this is what the Prophet ﷺ did. So if someone says, but, but this and that, that means his salah is not valid, his wudu is not valid. And who said that it's about cleaning to start with? This is your own assumptions. So the false assumptions leads to the false conclusion. Right? And this is the same thing with even the names and attributes of Allah. When people deny some of the attributes of Allah. Why? Because they start making similarities between themselves and the attributes of Allah. They say, oh, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have this? No, no, no. Why? Because they already made the assumption that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like his creation. And nothing is the like of Allah. So when they made this assumption, then they said, astaghfirullah, we can do that. So they denied it. Don't make the first assumption so that you don't fall into more deviations. Right? Nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second point, quickly, inshallah. So the first one is the love. And it's very convincing even with reason that the love of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam comes before anything. And the ayah in Surah At-Tawbah states this. And we are going to be put to test to this in our wealth, in our health, in our families, in our relationships. Who comes first? Second one, أَلَا يَكُونَ الْعَبْدِ حُكْمٌ عَلَى نَفْسِي أَصْلًا الْحُكْمُ is the ruling. We're talking about our own selves. So he's saying that the hukm of the Prophet والسلام, when you think of it and you leave it to someone to, to put it in nice words, talking about this subject, you'd say the hukm of the Prophet والسلام, the ruling from the Prophet والسلام, comes first before your own self making ruling upon yourself, right? No. He says, أَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلْعَبْدِ حُكْمٌ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ أَصْلًا That the abd, that the slave of Allah, that the person has no hukm he has no even decision, no decisions or judgment upon himself aslan from the very beginning. There's none. Bari al hukmu ala nafsi al rasuli sallallahu alayhi wa But rather the hukm, the ruling, the judgment that you would have upon yourself is to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, yahkumu alayha a'zam al hukm al al abd. He makes that judgment or the ruling more than the ruling of a master over his slave. So, for example, this is very clear. If you have a dispute or you don't have a dispute. So you want to know what to do with um, how to treat your wife. Right? How to deal with your wife. So uh, your wife, her name is this. And she acts like this. And you know her very well. Right? And you would say, this type of person, the only thing that works with her is, is this. Because I know her better than anyone else. Right? So you made your own judgment. No, there is no ruling for you over her to start with. You first get to know if it's easy and of course with ilm, what is the ruling? If the Prophet ﷺ would sit and he would make a judgment with your relationship with your wife and he would say you need to do this. So do you have any room for yourself? No, because the Prophet ﷺ speaks from wahi from Allah. So uh, and this is in any matter in our life. So whether it's how to deal with things and the same, the same ruling, rulings of every matter, whether it's money, whether it's jobs, whether it's occupations, whether it's how to make salah. Right? So some people, they say uh, the way even when you stand in the salah, uh, it makes sense this way or doesn't make sense that way. And just about submitting oneself to what has been authentically proven from the Prophet ﷺ in all matters. But see how the adab and the, the, the hukma of the Prophet ﷺ is what we start with. Not that you make a hukm and then let's see what did the Prophet ﷺ would say about this. Know that before you do that, you want to know first so that you can apply. Ya ladina aman, ula tu qaddimu bayna yada illa wa rasuli. Do not go forward uh, when it comes to Allah and His Messenger ﷺ. That means do not decide and then see what's the situation. That you have to know first and then you go about with your life. And he says, فَلَيْسَ لَهُ فِي نَفْسِهِ تَصَرُّفٌ قَطْ إِلَّا مَا تَصَرُّفُ فِيهِ الرَّسُولِ الَّذِي هُوَ أَوْلَى بِهِ مِنْهَا All of that is from the ayah. So you don't do anything about yourself. Uh, as people, they think you have the right to do whatever. person can uh, 
sign a paper saying that if uh, this organ fails, uh, don't give me medicine. Or you're making decisions for yourself. No, it's not permissible to make decisions for yourself. You wait to see what the Prophet ﷺ and the deen of Allah is calling you to be upon. So that has rulings to it. Depends on the person. There's no one answer to uh, everyone. So things like this in every matter. He says, فَيَا عَجَبًا Now the, uh, saying how amazing the matter is. كَيْفَ تَحْصُلْ هَذِي الْأَوْلَوِيَّةِ How can a person apply this ayah that the Prophet ﷺ has more right upon oneself than his own self? And when he قَدْ عَزَلَ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم عَنْ مَنْصِبِ التَّحْكِيمِ وَرَضِيَ بِحُكْمِ غَيْرِ وَطْمَأَنَّ إِلَيْهِ When someone already put that aside, the rulings of the Prophet ﷺ, he's not the one that is judged in one's affairs. He does not include that to start with. So how can he apply this ayah if he's not even, it's not a, an, an element in his life that he would seek the judgment of the Messenger ﷺ. And he would claim that guidance doesn't have to come all from the Prophet ﷺ, but rather comes from the Lalatul Uqul reason. There is people, they would say these types of things. Whether it's the, they call themselves the people of the Qur'an when, the, when they are far from the Qur'an, or they, they just clearly state this, that if the hadith is uh, against our aql, our reason, we'll reject the hadith. Openly like this. Uh, like those who would reject the hadith of Shaq al-Sadr. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was a child, Jibreel ﷺ came and he opened the heart of the breast of the Prophet ﷺ and he took his heart and he washed it and he removed the share of Iblis from it and he put it back, right, and he left. It's an authentic hadith. I say, no, this hadith is not authentic. Why? Because it's not something that can be applied in our life that we see. You know, if you see, can anybody see something like this in this life? No. So they reject it because of the reason. These people do not believe then in the power of Allah or miracles or what miracles and all of these things is all about anyway. So therefore they will be like the kuffar when they rejected al-Isra wal miraj How the Prophet ﷺ would leave Mecca to go to Jerusalem and go to the seven heavens and come back and all of that in the same night. Physically, not with his soul. Physically, the Prophet ﷺ went to all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. But these people, they do these types of things. They would grade the hadith, or they would say, they would not say uh, something, they would say the hadith is not authentic. Why? Because it doesn't fit their own reason. Not that it's not authentic according to the science of the hadith. So once the matter is clear and it's authentic, then a person, uh, he submits himself, and it's a very easy matter. It doesn't need really uh, complication to understand. It's all by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so, uh, Therefore, um, and the, the, the benefiting knowledge and the deviation and things of this nature. So we end with this. He said, فَمَنْ سَلَكَ هَذِيَ الطَّرِيقَةَ إِسْتَقَامَ لَهُ سَفَرُ الْهِجْرَةِ Whoever follows this, that means follow the way of following the Prophet ﷺ in such a way that he does not put aside the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ or any of that, but this is before anything and every aspect in his life. Then this is the one that is making that hijrah to the Prophet ﷺ. And then we would see how the enemies of Allah, how they act. They don't attack the Qur'an to start with. They attack the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because they know the Qur'an to the Muslims is something that, you know, is very well secure when it comes to the Qur'an. But the sunnah you can easily attack. So they attack Al-Bukhari, Muslim. Right, and they attack the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. How we prove that this is authentic and this and that, so that what? So that people would turn away from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Then the next step is to attack the Quran. This is a very well planned uh, plan of Iblis and the helpers of Iblis. Even if the person looks like he's sitting even in the masjid saying something like this, if he's sitting in the masjid, he's Iblis. Iblis had sent him to call the people. To reject the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He won't say it directly like this, but he'd say uh, the sunnah is not that important. The most important thing is the Quran. He is Iblis. Just take it like this. Treat him like Iblis. And what do you do with Iblis? We don't see Iblis to beat them up. <laughs> we, 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 don't listen. We, we run away from him. So we run away from listening to the whispers of Iblis. So, and many, if you really look into how things are in the world that we live in, you would discover many things in the light of the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people invented because of this 
the dilemma of putting forward one's reason before the wahi and sometimes it's because people do not know the wahi so as a result of not knowing the quran and the sunnah of the prophet and you have a situation you have to make a decision so it's a normal thing not necessarily that the person is iblis but what you what you're gonna do you're just gonna make a decision but without knowledge then you're gonna easy easily to follow the ways of iblis like even in the mas in a masjid i don't want to go into the details the masjid we need to make a decision about something right and other messages are doing this and people are doing this uh, yeah it makes sense this way you know there are sisters coming and we need to uh, make a lecture so brothers give a room and we'll all sit together because otherwise they won't understand what we're saying and people would look at us as as people that have issues with women and things like this so it makes sense that way no ilm of the deen where is the way of the prophet and decisions are made and people like it and people would find that there's nothing wrong with it did they uh, refer first to the way the prophet or is just something that this is what fits the environment that we're in or the maslaha the benefit that we're having and necessitates this and you would find young people doing this and making decisions and no shuyukha, no ilm, nothing whatsoever it's all the aql, the reasons comes before the naql the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah and the naql requires ilm again not also young people that looking at the hadith and making decisions rather to refer to the well established knowledge of this deen of Islam is not just from yesterday it's from the time of the Prophet والسلام, ilm that needs to be respected and to be followed. Uh, we'll continue, inshallah, because of the time. Uh,